Welcome to part two of the Physiological Adaptations in Response to Training presentation. The presentation begins uh, by addressing muscle hypertrophy, which is also referred to as muscle growth. And this is the opposite of atrophy, which means that muscles become smaller as a result of not training. In relation to improving performance, muscle hypertrophy occur occurs when both the muscle fibre size uh, and the connective tissue between the fibres increase as a result of resistance training. This enables the muscle to generate more force and more power. So training leads to adaptations, and we've been discussing adaptations throughout these last couple of presentations. These are structural changes that occur, in this case, in the muscle fibres, leading to hypertrophy. So resistance training uh, will lead to the muscles being stressed or challenged. The muscles then, as a result of that stress, um, grow and become stronger. Uh, and this leads to an improved level of performance because larger muscle fibres are able to generate greater levels of force. So if an athlete is involved in a power or strength activity, such as weightlifting, uh, the muscles, as a result of training, will experience hypertrophy gradually along the way and this will lead to um, greater levels of strength, okay? And likewise, when an athlete uh, is training and applying progressive overload, we're about to talk about fast twitch muscle fibres shortly, but these particular muscle fibres grow when stimulated, when doing powerful activities in training. They then grow as a result or experience hypertrophy, and this leads to greater power for sprinting. If you take a look at this image here, you can clearly see that muscle hypertrophy will occur when muscles are active, but particularly when muscles uh, or when training applies the, the principle of uh, progressive overload. So if we progressively overload our muscles or constantly lift a little bit heavier each time we do a resistance training um, session, so our program applies progressive overload throughout muscles will gradually increase in size. If we don't train or we stop training or we don't um, challenge those muscles, then obviously that will lead to muscle atrophy. In relation to fast and slow twitch muscle fibres, fast twitch muscle fibres are those muscle fibres that contract powerfully and they are ideal for sprinting, weightlifting and other powerful activities. Slow twitch muscle fibres, on the other hand, contract slowly and they use O2 or oxygen very well for endurance. So it's important for us to know that there are two types of muscle fibre, slow twitch and fast twitch. If you have a look at this image here, you can clearly see that the slow twitch fibres and the fast twitch fibres actually look a little bit different when part of the muscle, you can see that the slow twitch fibres are actually darker in colour and the fast twitch fibres are a little bit lighter. Uh, this is mainly due to the amount of, the increased amount of myoglobin in the slow twitch muscle fibres. Myoglobin, very similar to haemoglobin, attaches to oxygen. So the, the darker, redder colour indicates that there is more oxygen present or myoglobin in those fibres. Some interesting facts in relation to fast and slow twitch fibres. The ratio of fast and slow twitch fibres present in the muscles is thought to be genetically determined. So this is something that you generally cannot change all that much. That is the, the, the proportion of fast and slow twitch fibres. That's why sometimes we see people run around outside and some people are a little bit faster when we do short sprints and you get some people that are just a little bit more adaptable to longer distance running. It's, it's genetically determined. But these fibres can improve through specific strength and endurance training. So we can train the fibres that we are born with. Sprinters and weightlifters have a large percentage of fast twitch fibres. They are those fibres that are really good for explosive, powerful activities. And marathon runners have a high percentage of slow twitch fibres, which are really good for endurance long distance activities. Slow twitch fibres, as I've said, contract slowly. They use oxygen well and they're ideal for endurance. 
They contract slowly and they release energy gradually. They're efficient in using oxygen to generate energy, ATP, and they're resistant to fatigue, so it takes a long time to fatigue them. They're unable to produce the power of fast-twitch fibres, on the other hand, but they are suited to endurance-type activities such as marathon, triathlon and cycling. Slow-twitch fibres. In terms of improving performance, if we train slow-twitch fibres, okay, so as a result of training, uh, they do experience some hypertrophy, which means they do grow and get a little bit stronger. Um, they have an increased capillary supply to these muscles, which improves gas exchange and movement of nutrients and waste products. So as we train these types of muscle fibres, so if we do aerobic activity, marathons, long-distance triathlon, we actually improve the capillary supply to these muscles, which actually improves the gas exchange. We also increase the number and size of mitochondria, enabling more efficient energy production. Now, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the muscle cell or of any cell in the body. I'll talk a little bit more about mitochondria a little bit later, but basically, the more mitochondria you have, the more ATP that can be produced. Uh, a significant increase in myoglobin content occurs. So myoglobin increases in these particular muscles. So when you're doing an aerobic activity such as a marathon or a triathlon, the more myoglobin that you have inside your muscles, the more likely oxygen will be transported uh, from the blood and into the cells and into the mitochondria to be able to create more ATP. So a little bit more on capillaries. Endurance training increases capillary supply to enable efficient gas exchange at the muscles. This improves the delivery of O2. Now, slow-twitch fibres, due to their makeup, already have a, a, an increased capillary supply compared to fast-twitch fibres. When we train, and we train specifically for aerobic activities, so we do longer-distance, continuous fartlek training, aerobic interval training, we actually further improve this capillary supply. So if we see in this image here, we can see the capillaries are those really small vessels that actually um, are the site for gas exchange. So this capillary network becomes better and the oxygen delivery to the muscles becomes a lot more efficient and the removal of CO2 is far more efficient as well. Furthermore, with training, an increased number of mitochondria uh, is present in the muscle cells and this mitochondria produces ATP for aerobic activity. So in this image here, you can see that uh, the cell down on the left-hand side, um, you can see that the mitochondria, um, you can see there are quite a few of them floating around inside that cell. This is the powerhouse of the cell or the site that creates the ATP. So fast, uh, slow-twitch fibres have more mitochondria uh, inside the muscle cells, when we train, we actually improve this even further. So slow-twitch fibres will generate more mitochondria, which will produce more ATP for aerobic activity, which means the athlete can run for longer, swim for longer, etc. Myoglobin content also increases as a result of training. Now, myoglobin, as I mentioned earlier, is, the, is very similar to hemoglobin. It just transports oxygen uh, through the muscle. So there's a significant increase in myoglobin um, in the muscle which transports oxygen into the cell and to the mitochondria to help produce more ATP. Now hemoglobin is found in the blood and myoglobin is found in the muscle. It's important to know that. Fast twitch fibres. Fast twitch fibres, as I mentioned, contract very powerfully and they're ideal for explosive activities such as sprinting and weightlifting. They contract quickly and release energy rapidly but they also fatigue rapidly due to the anaerobic systems providing energy. Remember for our energy systems that the ATP PC system uh, is very short in duration, and this is the system that largely supplies these fast-twitch fibres. The body uses these for explosive activities such as weightlifting, field athletics, and sprint track events. Now, in terms of the impact of training on fast-twitch muscle fibres, hypertrophy of fast-twitch muscle fibres occurs, particularly when we train specifically 
the anaerobic system. So when we do intense sprint training or we do intense resistance training, uh, we tend to experience hypertrophy of those fast twitch muscle fibres. Also, the efficiency of ATP PC supply, and that's an indirect relationship to the enzymes that are produced um, at the cellular level, which improve the functioning of the cell, but also help to generate more phosphocreatine, um, which helps produce and get the chemical reaction happening for the ATP PC system. We also experience an increased tolerance of lactic acid. So if we train fast-twitch fibres, we, we get better at tolerating the lactic acid buildup, and this allows for more sustained performance for longer periods. Uh, and also muscle contractions can be made more forcefully and quickly as there are a greater volume of fast-twitch fibres. So if we train um, the anaerobic system, if we do sprint training over a long period of time, we tend to improve the function of these fast twitch fibers so we'll be able to, to run faster as a result so in a nutshell hypertrophy of fast twitch muscle fibers and efficiency of atp pc supply occurs when we train them um, the chemical reaction becomes a lot more efficient and there's more phosphocreatine available the increased tolerance of lactic acid occurs which allows performance to be sustained and for longer periods and the muscle contractions can be made more forcefully and quickly as there are a greater volume of fast twitch fibers and we improve in activities such as sprinting weightlifting uh, and, and all sorts of other power events it's important to revisit the specificity principle when we're talking about fast and slow twitch fibers if we train uh, the aerobic system and we do aerobic training so if we do continuous training fart leg training aerobic interval training we're actually training the slow twitch muscle fibers and we're going to improve the functioning of our aerobic system if we're training the anaerobic systems so we're doing anaerobic interval training we're doing resistance training we're going to train and improve those fast twitch muscle fibers so a muscle fibre overview, very quickly, this table sums it up quite well. You can see that fast twitch fibres are for strength, rapid movements, sprinters benefit from them. The type of respiration or energy system that's used is the anaerobic systems. There's fewer blood vessels, a small amount of energy uh, released quickly, less mitochondria and less myoglobin. And if we look at the slow twitch fibres, more for stamina and endurance, marathon runners benefit uh, the aerobic energy systems are used. There's many blood vessels and capillaries to transport oxygen. A large amount of energy is produced, but slowly. There's an increased uh, amount of mitochondria, and there's also more myoglobin in those fibres. Just a quick overview of the physiological adaptations. You can see resting heart rate decreases as a result of training. Stroke volume increases as a result of training. Cardiac output increases when training at maximal intensity. So there's very little difference between a trained and untrained athlete in terms of at cardiac output at rest. However, when training at maximal intensity, a highly trained athlete will have a much higher cardiac output. Oxygen uptake increases as a result of training. Lung capacity there is minimal change between a, uh, an untrained and, and trained athlete. Um, hemoglobin levels increase as a result of training. Muscle hypertrophy, muscles increase in size as a result of training, particularly resistance training. And fast and slow twitch fibres, basically as a result of training, um, fast twitch fibres increase when we do anaerobic activity and slow twitch fibres uh, increase in in size and development as a result of aerobic uh, activity. So just a quick look at the critical question that we'll focus on in the classroom. Examine the relationship between the principles of training, physiological adaptations and improved performance. So it's important for us to, to understand how our training principles actually lead to these physiological adaptations and then how this eventually leads to improved performance. So for example, if we if we uh, take part in aerobic training, aerobic training is going to strengthen the cardiovascular system. So the cardiovascular system will become a lot more efficient. The heart muscle will strengthen. 
more blood will be able to be forced out of the heart with each beat. Uh, so our stroke volume increases, uh, more blood will be able to be forced out of, of the heart in one minute when training at maximal level. This leads to improved uh, oxygen transportation through the blood to the muscles. When muscles have a lot more oxygen at their disposal, they're able to perform for longer periods of time. And this improves performance in endurance events such as marathon, triathlon, long-distance cycling, and so on. So that's just one example. It's important we think about specificity as well, particularly when training fast and slow twitch muscle fibres. Uh, and also reversibility is an important one to consider as well. If we don't train, we experience muscle atrophy and we lose all of those benefits that we've been talking about. Thank you very much for listening.